Well, happy Christmas Eve to you all, and welcome to this 24th day of December. It is day 358 in our journey through the Bible. Ho, 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 and a Merry Christmas to you all, my friends. We are at it again, doing that thing that we do every day. We're about to spend some time now in God's Word. We're going to let His Word spend some time on us. And oh, how we need that, no doubt about that. Well, today, I hope you're doing well. I hope that you are finding the light of Christ shining wherever it is that you are. Maybe it's a bright and glorious winter day. Maybe it's a terrible day. Wherever it is and wherever you are, my prayer is that you will allow the light of Christ to warm your heart, to draw you in, to reveal to you how deeply loved you are. And today, dear friends, we're going to let, and today, dear friends, we are going to let the disciple that Jesus loved, according to him, <laughs> direct us in that very way. We are in 1 John today, all of it, chapters 1 through 5. Father, thank you. Thank you for piercing the darkness. Thank you for revealing your heart to us in the flesh through your Son. Help us to see him today. 1 John chapter 1. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us, and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. 1 John 2 My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly know how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one you have had from the very beginning. This old commandment, to love one another, is the same message you heard before. Yet it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment, and you also are living it. For the darkness is disappearing, and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims, I am living in the light, but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. I'm writing to you who are God's children, because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I'm writing to you who are mature in the faith, because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. 
I'm writing to you who are young in the faith, because you have won your battle with the evil one. I'm writing to you who are God's children, because you know the Father. I've written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ, who existed from the beginning. I've written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts, and you have won your battle with the evil one. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world, and this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us, otherwise they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. But you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you His Spirit, and all of you know the truth. So I am writing to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And in this fellowship we enjoy the eternal life He promised us. I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and He lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true, for the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ, so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right are God's children. 1 John 3 See how very much our Father loves us, For he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children. But he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him. For we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, and there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning, because God's life is in them. So they can't keep sinning, because they are children of God. And now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well 
and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God, even if we feel guilty. God is greater than our feelings, and He knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence, and we can receive from Him whatever we ask because we obey Him and do the things that please Him. And this is His commandment. We must believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him, and he with them, and we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. 1 John 4 Dear friends, do not believe anyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in this world. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God, if a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the Spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children, You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint, and the world listens to them. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Dear friends, Let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God, and anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and His love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us His Spirit as proof that we live in Him and He in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face Him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. We love each other because He loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God, whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. 1 John 5 Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 
And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by the shedding of his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit who is truth confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about his Son, and all who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. If you see a fellow believer sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray, and God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death, and I'm not saying you should pray for those who commit it. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. We know that we are children of God, and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God, because we live in fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and he is eternal life. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. And now, dear Father, we pray your blessing on the reading of your word. Amen. John reminds us today that the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The true light is Jesus Christ. His coming was about as unassuming as as one could imagine, a tiny baby, born to a couple of teenagers, the mother, a virgin, in a tiny town, born in a manger. Who could have imagined that God would come to us in such a lowly way? But Jesus' humble entrance brought light back into the dark world, though at first, Only some family and friends, a few shepherds, some wise men, took note of it. When we read this, we can't help but draw a line from the birth of Jesus, the light of the world, to Genesis chapter 1, when God's light broke over the darkness, when God created the first dawn. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. For the God who said, Let there be light in the darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so that we can know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. As we look to the birth of Jesus, consider the ways that Jesus has brought light into your dark world. Put that light on a stand and offer that light to others and imagine a day coming when the glory of God will be all and in all. That's a prayer that I have for my own soul. And that's a prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's a prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Well, hey, hey, dear ones. I hope that this day fits you real well. I hope that you are staying safe and warm. I hope that your hearts are full of gratitude to the God who is love, the God who is present with you. Take his light into your day. Let it shine bright. Let it warm your own heart and invite others to come and to find the rest that you have found in him. Merry Christmas, my friends. 
I plan on being with you here again tomorrow, Christmas morning. I understand if you won't make it. (laughs) There's a busy day ahead for many of us, no doubt. But we'll be here, Lord willing. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Your brother Hunter plans on being with you. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength and let us always remember this. Are you ready to hear this on this fine Christmas Eve? You're loved, my friend. No doubt about that. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.